Hello, this video is going to show how we can measure structural coverage and perform unit testing with Lauterbach Trace32. Now, <clears throat> there's many environments that I could use for this video. I could have used Tricore with possibly the Tasking Compiler or the Green Hills Compiler or even the High Tech Development Platform. I could also maybe have used PowerPC with Wind River Diab or with Green Hills Multi again or possibly with, with GCC. But what I'm going to demonstrate today <clears throat> is an ARM integration and I could have used the, the Texas Instruments, I could have used IR, but I'm going to use the, the GCC compiler and I'm going to demonstrate with this environment here. I could also have demonstrated for a Texas Instruments a C2000 uh, with uh, an RH850, many other different environments, but this is the one that I'm going to demonstrate today. Now the starting point is going to have some, some code. So I've got some simple code here and it's going to, to build it. So let's build that. So let's use the, uh, the GCC compiler. I've now got my ELF file and so I'm going to execute that. So here I've created a, a, a script and it's going to use this CMM file that I've created. That's a, a Trace32 script and let's run this and see what happens. And there we can see that's now running and I've got this simple little application that's running there and I can control it by typing in various commands. So let's do an S for start. Let's have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, B. E for end, as we can see, it's printing out information. I could also maybe do an R for random and there that is executing. So that's the code that I want to, to measure coverage on. I also want to be able to unit test it. So let's close this down. Okay, so the starting point is going to be to analyze that code. I've already analyzed it to save time, and we can take a look and see what that code looks like. I could take a look and see, is it compliant to a particular standard? In this particular case, we can see, yes, it is compliant to MISRA C 2012. And if I took a, a quick look here, we'd be able to see that there were a number of violations inside the code, but if I double click on them, we're going to see that I've actually put a justification into the code and there we, there we can see I have the, the justification for these various violations. So the code is, is, is good. OK, let's take a look at the quality of the code. Let's take a look at a system call graph. The system call graph is very useful because it's going to show us, first of all, the structure of my code. And there we can see we have the main, so it's going to read a character from the terminal. It's calling all these various functions that are eventually going to print to the terminal. So I can view this in various different ways. We could, for instance, take a look at, uh, well, maintainability. Let's take a look at a number of metrics that give us an idea, is this code maintainable? <clears throat> and here we can see we're measuring metrics like the psychomatic complexity. Well, I can sort and very rapidly find the most complex function. So the user interface pass. Let's take a look at that. Let's open a flow graph. And the flow graph is going to give us a graphical representation of that function. And there we can see, well, that definitely looks like a switch statement. And here we can see we're getting data in from the, 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 the keyboard and then we're passing it. And in this particular case, we can see we've got all these various different inputs that we can type. Right, so that's uh, a quick overview of the code. Now what I want to go to do is to instrument that code and execute it. So I'm going to generate the instrument program, I'm going to build it, I'm going to execute it, and finally I'm going to measure the, the coverage. So this is going to take a little bit of time as it instruments the, the code. It's going to put probes just around the, the branches. Now we can see we've built it with the, the ARM compiler and it's now executing. I'm, I'm using the, the simulator. I could run it on, on a target. I just need to have the, the emulator and there's a few little extra commands that are, that are necessary. But for the moment that's running and just like before I can go in here, I can do S for start, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, B, E for end and let's, uh, let's stop and upload the history. So I'm going to press the, the pause button or break button and now I'm going to press this little button here that's going to read the data from the target or the simulator and it's now going to start passing that data and we'll be able to get an idea of well, how much of that code have we actually exercised. So just wait for that to, to finish generating the various reports 
and then we'll go and take a look at the core graph again and see what coverage have we obtained. Okay, so here we're going to go to the system core graph and this time we're going to put this into a view so we're going to be able to see the coverage. And there we can see in green the places where we've got 100% coverage. And of course I didn't type in many commands so we're not going to have 100% coverage and again I can sort and I can see I've got the statement branch and also a little bit of MCDC in, uh, coverage there. So there's quite a few commands for which I've got no coverage. <coughs> Let's take a look at something here like um, generate ticket. Let's right click on there and let's view a flow graph. And this time the flow graph is going to show us very clearly which paths have we taken through the code. And here if I click I can see I have a, a red block so we've never executed this bit of code and it looks like I've never had <coughs> a, a special offer that's equal to, to no offer. So that should be quite easy to get additional coverage for that. At the same time there's another branch here that we've never executed and looks like I've never had a counted product equal to, to null. Alright, so let's execute this a, a second time and see can we increase the, the coverage. So this time I don't need to instrument and build, I just need to execute and perform the dynamic coverage analysis. So once, a once again this is going to, to run on the simulator and now let's go and type in a lot more commands. Let's do an R for random, so do several of those. Let's do an S for start, let's add some of those, let's add some, some of those. We'll add uh, a few different things and then I'm going to add so many that eventually the basket is full and we'll do E for end and uh, that's probably got some pretty good coverage. We'll do a few more randoms, let's do an H for help, a Q for quit and this time that's automatically uploaded the results because the program ended and once again we're analyzing the results and hopefully we're going to get some some much better coverage this time <coughs> all right so it's just generating the final reports and once again we could go to the system core graph but this time let's go to the test manager report and the test manager report here so the test manager report is showing us the code review, quality review, and here we've got the dynamic report, and we can see we've got very good coverage. If we take a look at the cache register, we can see we've had two runs, and we've executed every statement. A few branches we haven't yet executed. And if we go into the add product function, we can see that previously we didn't execute this line of code. Now we have, and we've got complete coverage. But there's some places where we haven't got 100% coverage, so let's go into the unit testing tool, TB Run, and we'll see how we can complement the coverage. Right, so this is TB Run, and let's take a look at our, uh, let's create a test for maybe the uh, user interface. So I'm going to open a sequence here that I've previously created. So if I go into my low level tests, I've got one here for. <coughs> user interface pass. Well, that's a good one. Let's start with that. And <coughs> we can see here we have five tests and we can see we're testing a number of different inputs. And in this case we can see for some of these we're actually we've stubbed some functions that are missing. So we can see here that quite a few different functions were missing and so we've been able to stub them and since we've stubbed them we can actually do things like, well, in this case, I want to check that it gets executed when I enter this particular command here. So let's go and run these and check this works. So it needs to do a little bit more analysis. <coughs> then it's going to generate the harness. It'll build it with the GCC compiler. And then it'll run it on the Trace32 simulator. There we can see it's running. OK, that's executed. We've got the results back we can see the tests have passed and we should be able to see that the coverage is going to increase. So there we can see we have the user interface pass and let's see if the coverage increases from this particular run here. So that's just finished and now it's going to update the coverage and there we can see we've, we've increased the coverage. We still haven't got 100% but uh, I could run some more tests in order to get 100% but let's just check and see what coverage we've got here. Let's view a flow graph. 
Okay, so there's the, the flow graph we saw at the start, and it looks like there's just three commands that I haven't yet executed, and that's very easy. I could execute that a, a third time and effectively get the 100% coverage. And so if you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRay. Thank you.